What it do, baby? It's your boy, LaRocca504, back with another episode of Ace in the Hole, man. Sorry for the layoff, but we giving you the whole recap of month of August right now. Big month in the WNBA, big month for the Las Vegas Aces. There's a whole lot of things that went down that we're going to dive into. First and foremost, I want to just say that I apologize for not getting you guys a show this month, man. A lot of things been going on in my personal life that's been stressful. As y'all all know, man, life happens. I'm sorry I haven't been able to get the show to you guys as consistent as I would like. But, you know, playoffs is around the corner. We're about to be pushing it out for the playoffs. About to be doing a lot of promotions, a lot of giveaways to make it up for you to you guys. You guys want some Aces gear, Aces tickets, man. Let me know. I'm going to hook you up all playoffs just to make it up for you guys for being absent for so long. And uh, just want to put that out there, man. But uh, we, we got a lot to talk about. We got to catch some catching up to do. I'm happy to be back talking to everybody, man. Comment. Let me know what you guys think, what you guys want to hear, what you guys think for the Aces playoff matchups, who you guys want to see in the playoffs. I'll give you my predictions later on in the show. We're going to do a quick recap of the month of August, do a game-by-game game break now, and go from there. We got some things. Let's let's just do a quick rundown of what we're going to be talking about this for our recap of August. Aces, 6-6 six and six for the whole month. 500. You know, that's good enough for the three seed right now. Putting them in position to clinch that three seed. Clinch a playoff berth. And most likely get that first round by. So, overall, good, good stuff. Good stuff. Asia Wilson missing nine games. Out with an injury. Return in a big way. 27 of them things in her return game. Like, she didn't even miss a beat. Come on, now. Didn't miss a beat. She came back balling. Like, she never left. So, you know, that's uh, that's just a testament to her greatness. For real, for real. We already know how great Asia Wilson is. Leader of this team. Leader of the community. Face of the franchise. Second year player. And just, you couldn't have asked for a better person to be a leader of your franchise but while Asia was down you know what I'm saying hey, she ain't the only superstar on the roster we got one more we got one more went and quieter in the off season you know WNBA scoring record on them you know what I'm saying Liz Cambage everybody loves Liz the beast she held it down while Asia was out putting up 15 points a game kept the team afloat kept them going with the uh, some big victories, and you know she she was able to get more comfortable herself in this role. You know the team got to see what she is best utilized at, utilize her strengths more, and get herself more comfortable in the offense. It's still a growing progress. Her first season with the Aces, but you know when Asia was out, you saw those glimpses of why they went out and acquired her because she's a superstar and an all world talent. Yep. So, we're going to be diving in on that. We're going to be talking about just, you know, the Asian list still dominant. Who trying to see them in the playoffs? Even when they came back, Asia came back, she didn't miss a beat. Asian Liz, they looked even better than they did. They had early in the season. So, big ups right there. We got Kelsey Plum getting benched. We're going to talk about that up and down season. She keep bounced back in a big way. Aces, you know what I'm saying? We talk about some Dierica and Hamby. Stepping up big time, sixth woman of the year, doing her thing all season. But even when the team needed her most, man, she came through and did what a reserve is supposed to do. Step up and show out. So we're going to make her case for sixth woman of the year. Aces right now, top of the Western Conference, third seed in the playoffs. So, yeah, man, let's just dive into it, man. Let's just, let's just do a – we're going to start off with our game-by-game game breakdown of the month of August, give you my opinion and my look on what the Las Vegas Aces – they they started off the month of August going against the familiar folk. Started off against who they ended it against, ironically. August 1st, playing against the – World famous Los Angeles Sparks in the Staples Center. Aces unfortunately fell short and what is a big game, you know, this is anytime these two teams face off is fireworks. 
close proximity, a little bit of a budding rivalry right there. Um, but you know, the in the in the first game of the series, the uh, Sparks were able to get them. First game of the month, Sparks were able to come through and sneak up on the Aces and pull that dub out. And a close game, closer game than the score would indicate. That ended up being 76-68, a little bit closer than that. Went down to the wire. That was on ESPN, just like most of their games are when these two teams play. Two marquee teams, two marquee markets. So it's big time. A playoff series against them would be epic, great for the league. Stars is all around. But, you know, Aces fell 76-68, unfortunate game. Um, just, you know, not enough there. No Asia Wilson. So it is what it is. Moving on. We've got the Aces going up against the Dallas Wings. This game was supposed to be Liz Cambage's return to Dallas. It didn't end up working that way. You know, she was going through some issues, uh, a little bit of fatigue, a little bit of burnt out, some mental health issues, which, you know, you always got to respect. Kudos to the Aces for dealing with that the way that they did, being accommodating to those issues. And, yeah, man, that's what it's about, putting the player first. And I think that's why the Aces are appealing to a lot of players and a lot of the, they're kind of shifting the culture a bit when it comes to the WNBA and mental health and the conversation, putting the player first over the organization. And I think it speaks volumes to the people in charge and the type of culture and environment that's being run over here. So, you know, good for that. That's all. I'm never going to fault that. You know, we, we, people want to criticize players because, you know, they have issues outside of basketball, but these are human beings as well. You know what I'm saying? These people, you know, you call, you ever felt like you didn't want to go to work? You ever woke up and like, man, I don't want to go to work today. Or, ah, man, I'm going through things in my life. Things are difficult right now. I need some, I need a break. So, you know, I just want to always insinuate that you got to put the player first and put, not even put the player first, put the human being first, human beings first, and then, then their player second. So just be mindful of that. Moving on, Aces did win that game, actually, 75-70 without Liz Cambage, a little bit closer than you like, but Kayla McBride stepped up big time in that game, you know what I'm saying, as she normally does when it's, her number is called upon in that 75-70 win, she put up, man, she put up 21 big ones on 4-6 from the 3, she was really huge, I mean, Liz got a lot of the headlines, but you know, Kayla, she still averaged 14, Shot 47% from the three when Asia was down. So her scoring and shooting was a big lift for the team. Next up, you know, the Aces played in the Team Mobile, the big mobile arena. Not their usual Mandalay Bay event center, the house, as we like to call it here in the city. But, you know, 99-70 in the Team Mobile arena, Washington Mystics. Just It was the game that got postponed by the earthquake. Weird situation. And the uh, Aces were not able to make a comeback. 99-70 got blown out again by the Mystics. Mystics have owned them all year. Um, Mystics are the best team in the league. So, you know, no surprise there. Uh, Chicago Sky losing in Las Vegas to Courtney Vandersloot and the girls. Uh, tough one to lose, you know. You, gotta, you can't win them all, but at home... You'd like to see the Aces take care of business, but they bounce back. And maybe what might be, you know, one of the best wins of the season, beating the Connecticut Sun, who are number two in the WNBA and one of consistently one of the best franchises and one of the best teams in the league. So, you know, good win anytime you can beat a team of that caliber. Aces then club, you know, beat the Dream. Last year's finals representative taking a bit of a step back, but. Like I said, man, a win's a win. Always a good one. Without Asia Wilson, you can't be mad. And speaking of Asia Wilson, August 18th, playoff berth on the line in Chicago. Sky just beat them. They came and took care of business. Asia, Asia Wilson made a return, 27 points, 100 to 85. Went into Chicago, beat a good Chicago Sky team, got that win back. You know what I'm saying? Great job, great job. 84-79, coming back home in the house, 
taking care of business against the Phoenix Mercury, who are always a tough team, led by Brittany Griner, Kalani Mitchell, and Dewana Bunner, who is actually going stupid crazy this game, hitting threes after three after three from the parking lot, man. She, I watched, yo, she, that was crazy. For real, for real. That was a crazy game. And uh, Aces were able to squeak by that one. In OT, in overtime, actually. So that was a uh, then, but then you know, I was a three game win streak, four game win streak, excuse me. So it was looking like okay, the Aces are really peaking at the right time. They just clinched their playoff berth, like they, they could be in the running for a top two seed, but lost to the Connecticut Sun at home in a close one. Uh, the, the games with the Sun this year have always been close, every game decided by you know, single digits going down to the wire to the final minute. Um, I think it's just, you know, those teams are evenly matched. There's two great ball clubs, two great franchises. can go either way. I would love to see them in the playoffs, which you there's a very realistic chance if, you know, this we do see that series happen. So, yeah, that's a, that would be a great series. Two, two excellent ball clubs. Minnesota Lynx, 98-77 in the Target Center, the world famous. Minnesota Lynx just put it on the aces from deep. Aces couldn't buy a shot. The Lynx defensive pressure, their scheme, man, they just basically they just outplayed the, the Aces from start to finish in all aspects of the game. If we're being quite frank, the Aces, the Lynx are actually the team that man, I they're a lower seed. I do not want to see them in the playoffs. No, 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 no. They, they are so good consistently. They have well coached, just a great organization, great culture around them. A team that could be anybody. And kudos to them because they lost a lot of core pieces to a dynasty team and have not missed a beat. Likely have the rookie of the year on their team. Um, just all around, man. Not enough good things I could say about the Lynx and as an organization. A lot of respect for them. And I think that if hey, there's a team the Aces don't want to see in the playoffs, it'd be them uh, for the lower seeds. Just because I think, you know, they're such a veteran, well-coached organization that have done that before. They, they, they remind me of, like, the Spurs. They're, like, they remind me of the Spurs of the WNBA where no matter what, they're going to be a tough out in the playoffs and they're going to be well-coached and they're going to be a good team. So, yeah, if I look out for them. Indiana Fever, it's going to be a loss, man. If the, if the Aces do end up, you know, falling off and – not getting the highest seeds as they like. They're going to look at this game against the Indiana Fever as a reason why. 86-71. Fever, no disrespect. No disrespect. But, you know, let's keep it real here. They're 11-21. and 21. Aces are 20-12. and 12. Those are the type of games you can't afford to be to drop, you know? You can't afford to be dropping those, those type of games. And if the Aces end up... F- Stuttering down the stretch against the Dream and the Mercury, it can get uh, it, the seating can get a little murky because you know they're the Aces really are only a few games from falling down to to four or five. It, it's right there. It's so close between the Sky, the Sparks, and the Aces that. You know, a few, any loss, every loss counts. And to lose a game like that is a little bit disheartening. It can make the difference between a five seed and a two seed. But, you know, moving on. They bounce back with their biggest win of the year. And it's going to segue, actually, into our little uh, part about Kelsey Plum, who's had an up and down year. She's been, you know... This game was a breakout game. She had a good game against the Fever, actually, and that loss a little bit underrated. Her first game coming off the bench at the Aces had lost two in a row and a tough loss against the Sun and then a blowout loss against the Lynx. Bill Lambeer has been adamant all year about making changes when necessary, and he followed through on his word. I think he just said, let's get a different look against the Fever. Kelsey Plum was 17 in that game, so making her little, you know, she didn't respond negatively through the press. She didn't respond negatively with her attitude. She just went on and played better. And that play kept going on against the Sparks, giving her the confidence. She put up 17 points in just the fourth quarter alone to bring the Aces back from a double-digit lead. And, man, uh, you know, making it, I guess, maybe going off the bench is what she needed. You know, maybe that's, maybe she's not saying that she's, you know, not capable of starting because she is. She's very good. 
Maybe this is the role that she needs to be. Just come off the bench, put up the shots, and not have to worry about facilitating the offense or fitting in the role because she's been getting buckets. And if the Aces are really going to make that next step push in the playoffs and if Kelsey Plum can give them this type of contributions, they're not a team in the league that can be the Aces. Period. Period. With Kelsey Plum is on... And if she's playing this good, it just opens up the Aces offense. Like, the guard play for the Aces is so important. Because when you have Kayla and Kelsey and Jackie, when when either two of those trio play well, it just puts so much pressure on defenses because now they have to guard the perimeter. And that, I mean, the front court is the best front court in the league. You have two of the best. You have the two best front court players in the league in Asia Wilson and Liz Cambage. So when you have to actually go now out and guard the perimeter and you're opening up the post for those two to dominate and go inside, like how do you guard that? And if this is really, you know, Kelsey Plum starting to find herself and get hot because she's been she's she's shown flashes of pl- great play throughout her career and even last year towards the end of the year, like around July, August, it looked like she had turned a corner. She was starting to hit threes at a consistent rate, you know, find her niche a little bit. And this year, for whatever reason, she's been kind of doing the same play style, finding good shots. It just hasn't, they haven't fallen. And now, and you're kind of like, man, you know, like, she's right there. You never looked at her and was like, oh, yeah, she's done. She can't play. And she can't play. It was never that issue. It was just like something she needs to click. And if something finally clicked, it clicked at the right time for the Aces. And it could be dangerous for other teams in the league. And maybe benching her is what lit a fire under her, but... Uh, I'm happy for her. She's an easy player to root for, and uh, she's a very hard worker. So, uh, good job. And it was fun to see her get going in the, in, the, in that fourth quarter and the crowd get behind her, man. Packed house. Shout out to the house. Shout out to the fans out here supporting the Aces. They deserve it. They've been going crazy all year long, killing it. So, close out the month, just how they started to get the Sparks this time in in Las Vegas, and they pull out the dub, 92-86, giving the Aces sole possession of third place with the tiebreaker. Aces control their own destiny as we look right now, face the Mercury in the, or the Dream next. Uh, the, that should be a win, and I think that should clinch the three seed. And then, you know, they got the Mercury to close out the year, and then it's time for playoffs, man. It's time for winning time. The goal that these women have talked about all year. Um, a lot of people want to kind of discredit it because, you know, you get less campaigns, it becomes an expectation. Championship expectations start arising. People start throwing that word around there. But, you know, this was a team that has had the number one pick three straight years, hasn't made the playoffs in about four years. First time making it in Las Vegas. Like, I don't care about expectations. Like, they deserve credit for building re- the front office and the Aces organization and the move. They all deserve credit for building this thing up here so quickly and building a competitive team that can not only compete in the playoffs but can compete for championships by just going out and putting the necessary resources behind making a winner. And I think it could be a blueprint for other teams in the league. Like, if you do things right, like, obviously, obviously, having the number one picks help. But they've also shown, you know, a willing to a willingness to invest in the product, and when you do that, man, typically good things come out of it. You you get in what you put, you get out what you put in. So they they put in Mandalay Bay ownership group, Bill and Beard as coaching staff, this front office. They put in a lot of good energy and a lot of effort to building a high first class organization, and now we're seeing the results for it. So even though it was expected to make playoffs in a way, I don't think it's an accomplishment that should be undermined. But yeah, that's it. I wanted to get on my little spiel right there. Uh, six and six for the month of August, five hundred. But you know that win against the Sparks probably changes a lot of the fortunes. And if I'm gonna have to grade it as a whole, I'm gonna give it a B for business. They came in, took care of business, got what they needed to do, got a top four seed, got into the playoffs. Asia Wilson missed a lot of time during the stretch. You had no Asia. And you were still able to manage. You still able to come out pre- pretty pretty well for yourself. So, a lot of players are responsible for that too. I want to give a little shout out to some of the players that you know have stepped up big time this season. Uh, starting with Dierica Hamby, my sixth woman of the year, twelve and ten when Asia was out, she was going 
crazy stepping into the starting lineup. Started nine games, nine games, and she averaged 12 points, 10 rebounds, averaged a double-double. For the season, she's averaging 11 points and eight rebounds, second on the team in rebounds, fourth on the team in points, and only 24 minutes of 25 minutes of play. I don't think there is a reserve in the league that is – can, has been better. I think the Erica Hamby has done everything you would ask for out of a reserve. Even when the star player comes down, she just came in, stepped up, and the team didn't really miss a beat. So, the Erica Hamby, shouts out to you. X Teams X Factor. Big moves. And another move that was uh, made the Aces signed former All Star Efani Prince. Hopefully, I didn't say the name wrong. New York Liberty legend, former All-NBA, and overall, bucket getter. <laughs> the Aces got a bucket getter off the bench. You saw that in the, against the Sparks, man. Ten big points coming in right off the pine. Bill Lambert said, I don't even know if she's going to play. Yeah, right. She's not signed. Yeah, right. You, yeah, we saw that. <laughs> And I think it's exactly what this team needs. Another threat off the bench that can just kind of give you a bucket when the offense sputters. You see a lot of times when uh, the bench is in and Sidney Colson is running the offense and you have Sidney, Timera, and uh, there's just not enough creation, not enough scoring on the floor to make it happen. But, you know, Prince gives you another look and gives you another player that can go out and be a ball handler and go out and get you a bucket without you having to call a play for her. And I think that type of stuff is valuable, especially in the playoffs when the defense tightens up and you can't really get into your sets. You need a player that is like, all right, give me the ball, get out the way, and I'm going to go get us a bucket. And Prince definitely has that quality, and I think that's what made her appealing to the Aces. And she brings us, you know, a different dynamic to the team that they didn't have before. Not to say that, uh, you know, the bench players are, you know, like they wasn't good before, but... She just is able to bring something different to the table. And, uh, you know, I, I, with Kelsey, Kelsey's come off the bench twice now, and she's put up two of her best scoring outputs of the season. Like, it's really, it's not, maybe maybe that's a good role for her, and she can get going and get in rhythm and not have to get in rhythm from the start of the game rather than, you know, when she's with the starters now, it's more of, okay, we got to set up Asia and Liz, get them going, and then I kind of get going. It's hard to set a good rhythm for yourself. Off the, and then she's getting firepower and creation off the bench. The rotations, it's going to be interesting to see what goes on, what, what keeps going on as we get forward and closer to the playoffs. Um, Aces have a lot of options, a lot of good options on the bench, a lot of talented players, as we said. So, uh it, I don't know. I, if it was me, I don't want to be in Bill Lambert's spot right now. But he's uh, he he's the making the big bucks, and he's one of the guys that I would put in there for a coach of the year candidate, executive of the year candidate, whatever you want to call it. But uh, the way that they've, like I said, man, the way that this team has built this team so quickly and made them not only a playoff team but a legit contender, it's been cool to see. And I think you know, even with it's not just acquiring talent. It's getting that talent to play right in the gel and create a good atmosphere and environment. And this team is that they, they have, you see it with the lady aces. They, it, it's fun. The aces are fun, man. They fun. They going crazy this year. Fans is out here supporting it. So I, you know, shout out to all the people coming out to the games and watching and having a good time. Cause you know, the ladies deserve it. The city's buzzing. It has got some Aces fever. Aces fever, man. The house rocking night in and night out. It's becoming one of the coolest things. It's been cool to see this city growing to with the Aces and the fan base grow. Because I remember last year, man, It, it sometimes I would leave frustrated like, dang. Because I, I, I saw this, man. I saw this. I saw all this happen. And I was like, this is what this could be. This is the vision I saw. And now it's coming into fruition. And now people are getting on the bandwagon. And, and, and I love it. Because these girls deserve it. And, you know, it's good for the community as a whole. And it's good for the team. And it's good for the WNBA as a whole. But we're going to see 
as we continue to make this push. August was a big, big month. A lot of things going on. Uh, Asia looking healthy. I want to talk about Asia real quick, man. Just how good she's been. Like, she was legitimately going to probably be an MVP candidate had she not gotten hurt. But a lot of times, like, for her to come get hurt and then come back and then literally look like she has not missed a beat is, I don't know how that is possible. I don't know if, like, I've ever seen that in, in sports. Because, you know, usually when you miss nine games, you're out of shape. <laughs> Your shot's not right. Something's off with you. You're not getting – it just takes a little bit of time to get back in the rhythm. She came in, and they brought her off the bench because they were trying to move her in slowly against the uh, – I think it was against the sky. She came back. They brought her off the bench. She dropped 27. Are you serious? <laughs> Come on, man. It's incredible. It's incredible. And then that next game, right back in the starting lineup. Bill's like, no. Nope. Nah, yeah, she's ready. She's good. Don't worry about it. And she had a shirt. She had an ankle injury. So it's like not like you can do a lot of conditioning when you have an ankle injury. High ankle sprain. You know, you're doing a lot of rest, a lot of ice, a lot of recovery. So there's like conditioning issues, but... Mm, she's a she's a machine. She's a freak. <laughs> I'm sorry, Asia Wilson is cold. Uh, I don't I don't know you know MVP candidate whatever whatever you want to say, but uh, her numbers are not indicative of the impact and value she has on this team. I think you know they're starting to see Asia and Liz as like a duo now, not just individuals dominate games, and I think. That's going to be the key for them, too, in the playoffs. It's like we know they're great players individually, but now can they collectively be efficient enough to win you games? And I think the answer, we'll find out. We'll find out. That's that, That's really what we have to find out. And can they get enough from the perimeter players like Plum and McBride, who, you know, McBride had a little bit of a – she even – Will Lambert talked about it, too – because you saw it in, in uh, Game Against the Fever. You know, she, she got benched for the second half because she was just fatigued. And she's been playing hard on both sides of the floor all year, giving effort. Her effort is never always there. So, you know, you see the Aces kind of hit a little bit of a wall, especially during that three-game losing streak. After they clinched, you could see they may have taken their foot off the gas just a smidget. I know they beat the Mercury, but I feel like they're always going to get up, especially because Liz and Asia, you know, they're always going to get up when they have a, a, another elite big like Brittany Griner. And then against the Sun, you know, they lost a, a nail-biter. But they, they against the Fever and the Lynx, looks like they took their foot off the gas a bit. And it looks like they were running on fumes and going through the motions. And they paid for it and back-to-back blowout losses. So... Uh, the, for them to come up, they, they beat the Sparks in that losing streak. It's just a lot about their resolve and their ability and talent. And we're going to see if that carries over, man, to the playoffs. September, August is in the books, 6-6. Six and six. Age is back healthy after missing nine games. Um, let's get it. Let's get rolling, Vegas. Let's get rolling. Let's get the playoffs underway. I will be bringing you episodes weekly for playoff coverage. All playoffs. You can take that to the bank, man. I'm so happy to be back with you guys. Life's getting settled down. It's been a rough month. But being back here talking to everybody on Ace in the Hole, getting this content out to you guys, man. I just want to be your number one source for Ace's commentary, Ace's talk. Let's talk some let's talk some ball, man. Let's talk. Let's talk some hoop. Let's bring it on. The Aces are the talk of the town. Let's give them some love. Let's give them some burn. For me right now, the fun is just beginning. And we got some playoff previews coming for you in the next episode. We're going to be bringing on some guests to talk, bringing on some, you know, answering your questions on the show. Get, hit me up on Twitter, LaRocca504. We're doing giveaways, playoff giveaways, playoff tickets, playoff jerseys, doing whatever we can to make sure that arena is packed. Doing whatever I can to make sure I bring you guys the top source for Ace's commentary. It's been fun, man. I'm glad to be back. I'll catch you guys next week. Peace.